Hello Aquarius, this is Gypsy Spirit here with you, ready to give you your um, power, your goddess power oracle card reading for the week of September 5th through September 11th. And um, I don't really know a whole lot about the goddesses, the different goddesses. And so what I prefer to do is share them with you uh, to give you some insight, and even myself some insight. But along with it, um, I have a little story to tell you, a personal story uh, when it's over that can, that relates to um, the message of this goddess. So let's go ahead and get started. I've already pulled your goddess card, and uh, your goddess is Maya, and she is the goddess of illusion. So, and we all go through dealing with illusions. So let's go ahead and uh, read what it says. This is. 35. Okay. So, um, the empowerment message is when you look at the world, everything you see appears to be real. So it's easy to imagine that your current conditions are influenced only by obvious actions and calculated movements. This is an illusion as everything is intricate, intricately, uh, connected though not visible to us due to the limitations opposed, imposed on our perception by our five senses. Multiculturalist goddess of illusion, Maya, who appears in Hindu, Buddhist, Greco-Roman, and Scandinavian spiritual traditions and myths, calls you to trust that the invisible world is responding to your deepest desires and intentions to make a better life for yourself and others. You are able to see through the curtain of illusions. Your clarity and intuition is heightened as your next steps are sure-footed. Sure when the goddess Maya chooses to help you, trust that everything you need arises from the world with ease. So your alignment message is the goddess Maya has come to give you some clarity now. How have you been in denial about your life lately? Have you been chasing after an outcome that eludes you? Do you want to believe in something or someone so badly, perhaps drawn by a potential you hope to see come to fruition, that you have lost your way and given your power over to them? Your alignment task is to summon your courage and be willing to see things as they really are rather than the way you want them to be. Be honest with yourself. The goddess Maya understands the seduction of the illusion of separation. After all, she created the illusion of the individual self. Once the illusion has faded, you are free to choose another path, another way, and other people to connect deeply with. This is a wonderful time to do a self-inventory of your life, how you love, what you believe, who you follow, why you choose to live the way you do. When the goddess Maya comes down comes to break down illusions and delusions, it is a very a suspicious sign. So I have a couple of stories actually to tell you. Um, years ago, I had this friend, her name was Danette. And uh, Danette was desperate, very, very desperate to be in a relationship. And she was very picky, very, very picky. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, I'm telling you this story because I was thinking about her this morning. But, um, she, uh, she's kind of a bitch, you know, I mean, she, she was very high maintenance. <laughs> I can tell you that. Um, so she was so, so desperate to be in a relationship and she had been with a guy that really screwed her over, or actually a couple of guys that screwed her over really badly. And, um, both these two guys had like really taken her for money and she, you know, she had a job where she made, you know, pretty good money. Um, but she went on these, one of these online, um, dating sites or whatever. And she started talking to this guy and she showed me a picture of him and I was like, damn, he's good looking. I mean, this guy was really hot. And, um, she, she was like talking to him every day. She never met him. And, and one day we're talking and she's telling me about how he had told her that, you know, he wanted to marry her and um, he wanted her, he, they were going to get a house and they, she was going to have her own studio. She was a photographer and he wanted her to have her own photography studio and blah, blah, blah. And all, I mean, just like 
all the stuff that, you know, all her dreams, you know, being fulfilled. And, and, uh, and the more she talked, I was like, hey, wait a minute. You, you guys are already talking about marriage and you have never met him before. I mean, what the hell? And, and at this time, I mean, this was, you know, I want to say this was like back in 2000 nine maybe 2008 something like that and uh might have been even earlier than that so you know the whole um nigerian dating scam you know it was just you know people were just now starting to like really catch on to it and and a lot of bad things were happening to women and in regards to this but you know i i'm listening to her and i'm telling her uh, no, uh, some, some done some way. Well, phew, she got so mad with me. Oh my God. You would have thought that I stabbed her or something. Um, she didn't want to talk to me about it. Um, she was determined that they were going to get married and, and, you know, he loved her and he happened to call her one day when she and I were in the car. So she, I had to pull the car over and she went, she got out of the car and went a little ways to talk to him. I know she called him because I was telling her all this stuff. Like, this guy's not real. This guy's trying to rip you off. You've never even met this guy. I mean, there's something not right here. And, and so she said, pull over. I'm going to call him. And so she came back and he soothed everything over. And she said, you know, everything is fine. And, and we're going to meet, you know, at such and such a time, you know, while things go on and, and, you know, she, she was talking about going to, to Turkey or wherever this guy was at, was in Turkey. And she was going to get on a plane and go to Turkey to, to meet him. And her parents lived in, uh, about two hours away from us. And I said to her, I said, Danette, I don't want to interfere with your life or anything, but if you get a ticket to get on a plane, to go to Turkey, I will get involved. I will call your parents and let them know what's going on. And, um, and I kept persuading her, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. And then he was going to, uh, told her that he was in Turkey. He told her that he was like this, um, uh, big contractor or something, and that he had to go to Turkey to, to meet with lawyers over this contract that he was working on and that he was going to come back and they were going to meet. And, and he gave her an address and everything that sounded legit that was like in our hometown. And so, <laughs> um, but that he was in Turkey and, um, he, you know, was on business and it was really frustrating because he was trying to meet with all these attorneys and, and that he lost his phone and, and he needed a new phone. And she said, do you want, she asked him, she said, do you want me to get you a phone? And she said, he hummed and hawed about it. And he said, well, yeah. So she goes out and she buys him a $600 phone and sends it to him. <laughs> so, um, she's telling me all about, you know, that, you know, in Turkey, you know, how he's, um, there was something going on and he was having a hard time. Uh, making some connections with lawyers. Um, it, you know, he was having to work all day long and things were, were not going as they should have. Um, so he was like delaying his time because he was telling her he was going to be um, home at a certain time, but he kept like pushing it back, pushing it back because his reasoning was that um, they had so much more work to do with attorneys and, and stuff like that. So I said, well, wait a minute. Let's, you know, like, where is he at in Turkey? <laughs> and it just so happened to be that this particular week that he told her that, you know, he was meeting with all these attorneys. I happened to look up Turkey and, you know, and it, it, the dates that we were talking about, they were going through some sort of, um, major holiday i i want to it starts with an r uh ramanan or, or something like that but anyway whatever it was it's a massive holiday where everything everything shuts down for a whole week nobody does anything 
So there was no way in hell that he was meeting with lawyers and doing all this stuff. And I even sent her the text or the, the, the article that I was reading. I said, look what's going on. He, he's lying to you. He's not meeting anybody. There's no lawyers. And she finally, oh my gosh, it took the longest time to get her to realize that this was not real. It was not real. All these hopes and dreams, it was not real. She was not listening to the red flags. But I will tell you another story that's related to me. Um, I, back in the 70s, I, uh, anybody that knows me knows that I'm like madly in love with Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah, I'm an old hippie. Um, he's, even today, I, I, I joke and say, well, he's my rock star, imaginary rock star husband. So, um, back in the 70s, um, I was young. I was very young. I was 16. Yeah, 15 or 16. And I had moved to Napa, California with my family. My, fa my stepfather had been transferred out there because he worked uh, for civil service in the Navy. And I went to this school. And, you know, at the time, Napa was a small little place. And it had um, very small, you know, only two schools. And I went to Vintage High School. And I got very involved in theater. And uh, one night we had done a play. I think it was Romeo and Juliet. And after the play, there was a cast and crew party. Well, I hardly knew anybody. The only people that I knew were the people that were involved in this particular play. And so um, everybody said that they were going. Brian Cox, was, his parents were out of town for the weekend, and he was having a party. It was a cast and crew party, so I didn't know who Brian Cox was. I never heard from, never heard of him, you know, at school. But evidently, because this is such a small town, everybody kind of knew each other. So um, Brian was evidently um, connected with a lot of the um, people that were in theater at the school. So I went to this party, and. Um, I was talking with friends and, you know, didn't know, you know, I'm in this house and there's all these people there and music and everything and drinking and, and, uh, this guy walked up to me and he handed me a drink and I looked at him and I thought, oh my God, he looks like Robert Plant. He's hot. And so, um, I, um, I ended up that night in his, uh, not only in his bedroom, but on his back deck. He left his party, his guest, and went on the back deck with me, and we just made out until it was time for me to go home. And um, I was just so um, overtaken with, with this guy because he looked like Robert Plant, and he had, like, the way he talked, and... Um, you know, it, it was just so rock star-ish, like Robert Plant, you know, it was what my illusion of, um, Robert Plant would be, and so, um, we went out, and, and we dated, and, and I just was, like, all head over heels, totally in love, and, um, about a month later or so, he broke my heart, he, um, broke up with me and went back to an old girlfriend, and uh, the girlfriend that he had broken up with to be with me, actually, so he said. Um, so anyway, I mean, I was just absolutely devastated. My heart was so broken. And um, I just, at the time, you know, I was innocent, and I really had no clue, you know, who he really was. I just saw him as, you know, this guy that looked like this amazing rock star. And, um, over the years, I mean, I've always thought about him. I mean, I always kind of felt like he was the one that got away. And not too long ago, um, I was looking through Facebook and I looked him up and I found him on Facebook. <laughs> and guess what? Well, one, he doesn't look like Robert Plant anymore, but of course Robert Plant doesn't look like he did in the seventies anymore either. But <laughs> <laughs> but no, he, this guy definitely does not look anything like Robert Plant. And 
the stuff that I was reading on his Facebook, I mean, it's like he's never grown up. He never, I mean, he still, you know, is into the drug scene and, and, um, I don't know. I mean, it, I was so blessed that, that, that relationship ended when it did because no telling what I would have done for him, you know, I mean, I was just really got in love with him. I was young and stupid. Um, but yeah, I mean, now that I look back on it, I see that, you know, it was just all an illusion that I had, you know, in my mind. It's what I wanted to see and wanted to think. And so in the end, I ended up getting my heart broken. So I feel like for some of you um, Aquarians that there may be something going on in your life and you're not seeing the forest through the trees or, or you're looking at it through rose-colored glasses. So my advice for this week is think about taking those rose-colored glasses and seeing things as they really are. And hopefully things will get better and, and you'll start to see the truth. So I hope this helps. Um, if any, um, I will see you next week. <laughs> and also, please be in love and light this week, okay? And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.